I think it has to be kept in perspective. I think in the last 30 years, um, there are many cities. I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. I lived there for the first 20 years of my life, and they were constantly hit with lawsuits over many, 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 many issues. And cities have to pay this money out. This is a very unfortunate thing that happened. I don't think this is an issue where you dump the city manager on. I think that if you look at the picture, our streets are clean, our garbage is picked up, our snow is removed, we have a triple A bond rating. We've just, as it was mentioned earlier, we have been able to build and expand a high school, a library, a new police department. By all measures, Cambridge is doing well. And to keep focusing on this one issue as something that you change leadership over, I think would be a huge mistake for the city and, and more importantly, the residents of the city. Um, well, I know a lot of people are very uh, concerned about the lawsuit, and I think you hear uh, a number of things that, uh, that come to my mind about that. And one of them is that uh, the lawsuit was about uh, women leadership in the city, and, uh, uh, and since the lawsuit was filed, which was some 15, almost 15 years ago, leadership in the city has actually changed quite a bit, and we have a number of very key women leaders sort of uh, answering concerns that I might have had about whether women in leadership, are, 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 whether that's possible in the city, and I know it's quite possible because of our uh, Commissioner of Public Works and because of the Head of Human Services and uh, because we had the Head of Community Development who was also entrusted with uh, a lot of responsibility in the city. Uh, the, uh, as far as the city manager is concerned, we have a process uh, under his contract where uh, we do the council does an evaluation in, uh, in springtime uh, and notifies the manager of, uh, of intentions to negotiate or not negotiate a, a contract. There are opportunities at that time uh, to address issues like this in a very orderly fashion, and I think that's what I would expect to happen. Mr. Williams. Uh, well, I think that uh, there are some problems with the current city manager manager and our deputy city manager, it's not just the city manager. Um, I, I'll start by pointing out that he paid $336,000 a year. His assistant, Rich, Richard Rossi, has paid $270,000 a year. The Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, Tim Geithner, is paid $172,000 a year. That's an awful lot of money for somebody to be paid. And, um, I guess my view of it is what's going on here, That's that, that people who have run the city for as long as they have are paying themselves so much money with tacit uh, acquiescence on the part of the city council. Uh, he's been in power for 35 years, and my, my central concern is not so much the immediacy of this litigation, which uh, is a kind of a touchstone of a problem, my concern is that the city manager and his assistant and their their circle have a chokehold on the city, on the policies of the city, on the administration of the city in ways that hold back the possibilities for change and for improvement that exist in the city with all the talent and the creativity available to us. So for that reason, I would move immediately to begin a search for a suitable replacement. Yeah, thank you for the question. I, I guess, you know, I, I'm going to say that I'm probably, I'm in the minority here on this table and on the council that I wasn't actually satisfied with the decision to, this lawsuit was filed I think actually a year before I was in the council, 13 years ago. Um, I wasn't satisfied or happy about us pursuing the appeal. I was one of two counselors who absolutely adamantly opposed the appeal. I opposed it on financial reasons because if we lost, which I was pretty certain we would, he would read the actual verdict and that two, the twice the, 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 um, the verdicts were by a judge and a jury that we were wrong, that I was confident we were going to lose. And unfortunately, only one other counselor was as, was as confident as I was. I also believe um, the morality of it. I, I believe that we were just wrong. And, and I'm happy to talk more about that. So when you talk about looking for new leadership, you only had two counselors who were willing to oppose the appeal. It takes five counselors to fire and hire a city manager. 
I will say that um, I'm also really looking forward to when the executive um, session minutes can come out, um, and I was one of the minority of the counselors who voted to release those, but it did not pass. That said, I will tell you the manager also has a lot of strengths, um, and I have not found there to be a, um, a great obstacles in my way about whatever chokehold some people might perceive on administration to accomplish issues that are important to me. And pushes that are important to me and, that, and the constituents who have asked me to represent these issues have been to do more um, public engagement on budgeting. As chair of the finance committee, I worked really hard to hold for the first time ever community-based budget hearings around the city, which led directly to um, innovations in technology, where now if you have a complaint with the city, you can file it online. Um, it's rolling out in the next few weeks. You'll be able to follow it on a smartphone, follow your complaint, and follow a target number that tells you where the status of your complaint is. You can now pay your taxes online. Um, how much time? Oh, I have so much more to say on this. No, there's the, the second part of the same question is about transparency and how you feel oh, I, I about think, that. And so we'll, okay. that feeds directly into that. You can answer that part and you'll go first. Okay. So, I'm sorry, the second part is how I feel about transparency? Well, many candidates have expressed an interest in greater transparency. What do you think Cambridge government needs greater transparency? I guess I, I'm going to say I think that actually I serve on the executive board of the Mass Municipal Association, which is municipal bodies across the state. I actually think there is great transparency in our government. Do um, do I would I like to see greater transparency in how this case was decided when we talk about the Melvina case and the decisions were made? Absolutely, and, and that's why I voted to release the executive session minutes. All right. Uh, oh, okay. I had more. About that. Uh, yeah, I think there should be a lot more transparency. Uh, it's not easy to see how that could actually be accomplished um, because what I my sense is that a lot of decisions in the city are getting made behind the scenes in informal discussions informal relationships that we as the citizenry are really not privy to maybe some of the city councilors are in on some of these kinds of uh, conversations but I do have a, a strong sense of uh, sort of behind the scenes decision making. I think we're, we're, we're going to be seeing more of that again uh, with the Kendall Square uh, development issues and the what I, what I call the tsunami that's coming our way from Kendall Square towards Central Square. And um, I don't know that, that there's an easy solution to this because there's nothing unlawful about some of these discussions, but I do think we need more openness. Uh, on transparency, uh, the thing that concerns me the most is um, has to do with zoning decisions. That uh, very often these are very complicated decisions, and uh, neighborhoods have really huge stakes in what happens in zoning. And uh, and I think we need to slow the process down sometimes so that people can really understand uh, what their uh, what their rights are, what the possibility is for them, and participating in these zoning decisions. And I don't think there's any uh, nefarious uh, idea. It's just more the idea that you can move, you could, you can move faster, or you can move slower. If you move slower in a certain kind of way, you can explain more what's going on. And I think that's very important. I think it's important that we increase the transparency in our government. And I think the way that we do that is to make sure that we are in certain people within the city. And you can do that by having a meeting just a second, excuse me. And then going to a neighborhood like once a month for the fourth meeting. We have state-of-the-art facilities that would allow people to come and engage in the government if we take the government to them. I think too much, we spend too much time saying, come to City Hall, come to City Hall. If you want your voice heard, you can come and meet with us and we'll talk to you, which is true. If you can find a parking space around City Hall. And to that end, I think the way that we do it and increase the transparency is to take the meetings to the people. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have a specific question anybody can ask? In that case, well, actually, I, I have a question. Okay. So, um, Larry, you, you're, you're basically saying that the financial considerations trump ethical considerations on the... On the, on the hiring and firing of the city managers, et ethics is secondary to finance. That's what no, that wasn't the question. Um, if, so if you're asking me if it's secondary, no. if you're asking me if it's secondary, ethics secondary, absolutely not. And I think that we have plenty of proof over 30 years of service and of what we have seen happen in our city 
that ethics is at the top of the list as well as financial. And we have to be responsible as counselors to balance the two. And I think we've done a great job of doing it. Anyone else? Anybody else like to address that issue? Why not? What issue? The question that this gentleman just Which? I have one question. Okay. For uh, anyone. If, uh, for some reason, Mr. Healy resigned, he's out the door, or the city council somehow decides to fire him. Is there anybody in the city government, with the exception of Mr. Rossi, who you feel has been groomed to take over from inside? Uh, I don't, I don't, personally, I happen to like Jim Maloney a lot. My, relate, my experience uh, in, in, in inter interaction with Mr. Maloney is very positive. Is he being groomed? I don't think so. I'm not sure I would want somebody who were being groomed in, the, in one sense of, of, of that. I also want to make the point that the, the whole discussion about the city manager is in some ways kind of beside the point because I really don't believe that there is going to be a majority of the council, whoever gets elected, who are going to make a move to replace him. So in a, in a sense, what we really need to be talking about is what can be accomplished until the, the day comes when the city manager decides it's time to retire. And so I, 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 yeah. I just want to say something about your comment about the salaries. I think it's a Massachusetts issue. Look at the state salary. Mm -hmm. I think that we've gotten sort of carried away. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's just the city. And when I first came here in the 60s, mm. Cambridge was a mess in a way. Mm. And when Healy came into power, things got straightened out. So I would really hate mm. to see him go. Mm. Yeah, that was Thank you. Welcome. Um, we still have to start the next section. Okay. <laughs> 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 neighborhood issues. One of the city council's goals is to foster community and support the neighborhood vitality. What do you see as the key elements in maintaining neighborhood vitality? How do you plan to engage neighborhood associations in this goal? Ms. Davis? I'm sorry, what's the city? Because I, I, I thought the next one was something else. Can you please repeat that? I'm sorry. One of the city council goals is to foster community and support neighborhood vitality. <laughs> Please, please do. Hello.